Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yes, today guys, we are going to conclude our Rockola Jump Bug Arcade Restoration Series. That is right, this is the ninth and final part of this video series. And in this video, we are going to enjoy the fruits of our labor. We are gonna actually play the game. And yes, the game is now 1000% because, well, I fixed a big issue, okay? And I'll tell you guys how I did it. Now let's quickly review, because in the first eight parts of this video series, well, we restored this game in the garage, and we really restored it. I mean, we, we removed every screw, every bolt, every part, and there is nothing on this game that we did not touch, okay? We put brand new laminate on the sides, brand new side art. We removed the control panel. We, we kind of cleaned that up and refurbished it, you know? We put a new power supply in there. We rebuilt the monitor. We painted the blue. I mean, we really did everything to this game. However, after I was all done in the garage, and after I thought everything was perfect, I brought the game down here and the monitor started acting up, okay? And it's been a real bummer, okay? It made me super mad, okay? Because I thought I was done with the jump bug, but no, the monitor started freaking out. And yes, lo and behold, look, I fixed the monitor. Because what was happening was, it was taking about a half hour, 40 minutes for the game to get into focus. I would turn the game on and this entire screen looked like someone like rubbed Vaseline all over it. It was so cloudy, so out of focus. And I had a lot of guys making all kinds of suggestions, okay? You know, some people said it was, uh, the flyback was going. Uh, some people said it was a cap on the neck board. Uh, I, I was talking to Sean Fetish Boy Williams. He was telling me that uh, there's a film capacitor and a square capacitor on the chassis. It could have been that. Um, Jim Bodini on Claw was saying you had a bad uh, a focus pin on the neck board, okay? So I, I kind of took all these suggestions in. And I, I listened to what everyone had to say, okay? And I, I kind of took the path of least resistance here, okay? Now the first thing I did was I replaced this capacitor right here, okay, on the neck board. And if you look here, there is a cap that goes into the socket, okay? Because this, this red, and this is a 4600 neck board, uh, this is actually off of a junk chassis, okay? Anyway, you, we have the socket here, and we have this red wire that goes in. This red wire is the focus wire. And inside here, if you remove this little cover, there's a little tab, and, and on that tab, soldered, is this focus wire, and then also one leg of this capacitor right here, okay? So one leg goes in right there, and then the other leg goes into the board. Now, everyone says that this capacitor, the one with the, with the electrical tape, if that goes bad, it will cause the monitor to be out of focus for like 10, 15 minutes, a half hour, and then after it warms up, the picture all comes back, okay? So that really sounded like my problem. So the first thing I did was I removed the neck and I swapped out this cap. Now I swapped out this neck, uh, this cap from another neck board, actually from this one right here, and it didn't fix my issue, okay? Now it's possible that I put a ba another bad cap on here I think the odds of that are pretty slim. That I would, that if I took a cap from another chassis and I put it on this monitor and I'd had the same exact issue, I don't know, those odds didn't seem good to me. I, 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 I feel like it wasn't this cap, okay? And then I started thinking about what Jim Bodini was saying. He said I had a bad focus pin on uh, the socket on the neck, okay? Because he had the same problem before. And I said, okay. Well, that's kind of easy to do, because I could, I could take the back door off the game, I could remove the neck, and I could work on it while the monitor's in the game, and that's something I could probably knock out in like an hour, okay? So the other day, I did that. I, I removed the socket off of this junk board, okay? And this is actually the original neck board that was on the game. It's cracked, okay? So I pulled the socket off of this, and then I removed the socket on that one and replaced it with the one from this, and then it looked like this when I was done. And then what I also did, I replaced this cap again, except this time I used a brand new part. Now there's a website like, uh, it's like surplus chips or something that sells these capacitors for like 85 cents. I bought like five of them so I have them on hand, okay? And this is a new one right here. And, and the value of this cap is 100 PF, which is uh, Pico Farads, uh, 12,000 ceramic, ceramic, okay? It's a 12,000 volt ceramic capacitor and it's 100 PF or, or Pico Farads, whatever. 
which is a different unit of measurement. I think it's like one one thousandth of a microfarad or something, or one one hundred. I don't know. Google it. But it's it's a picofarad. And so what I did was I replaced this socket. I put a new cap capacitor on here, and then I also reflowed all of the solder on the back. I put the neck board back on, and bam, I fixed it. And let me tell you, I was jumping for joy because. First of, all, first of all, that was the easiest fix of all of them, okay? Because I, I really was not in the mood to pull the monitor out, bring it in the garage, pull the chassis off and do all this work. I was really hoping the problem was on the neck board and it turns out it was. So the monitor is now fixed and I'm super stoked. And to celebrate, yes, to celebrate guys, we're gonna play the game, okay? And I, I just wanna take the time here <clears throat> to play the game because we really haven't played it. I know we talked about it, but I always like to end my restore videos with the gameplay video. And this is one that's been on the list. And now that the monitor is fixed, I feel like I can truly do a gameplay video. So, all right, let's talk about this game. Okay, so Rock Cola Jump Bug. So this game was actually developed in Japan by a company called Hoei, H-O-E-I. Um, now, Hoey wasn't really the developer, they were just kind of like the company that, like, that organized the development. And it's my understanding that, <clears throat> excuse me, a company named ADK, which is like Alpha Denshi, ADK, they, they're the ones that actually did the development of this game. And what's interesting about this game, well, the developer, for one, is interesting because ADK actually went on and did a bunch of Neo Geo games. They did Magician Lords, which is actually a really cool Neo Geo game. And they also did the World Hero series of games. But this is one of their very early games called Jump Bug. And what's cool about this game, which not a lot of people know, is that this is the very first side-scrolling platformer ever. Think about that. that is, this is the first side-scrolling platform game. And I think that's pretty awesome, actually. I mean, this is the game that started it all. This is before Mario, you know, and before Sonic, before whatever side-scrolling platformer you love, this is the first one. I, I think it's freaking awesome. So anyway, they sold the game, the rights to, 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 to Rockola in Chicago to distribute the game, okay? And Rockola are the ones that basically made these cabinets, okay? Rock Cola created the artwork, you know, th this little jump bug on here. Now, what's funny is that the little Volkswagen on here is actually very different than the Volkswagen in the game. This Volkswagen that Rock Cola came up with was basically made to match Herbie, you know, the Disney Volkswagen with the eyes. And the one in the game is just a Volkswagen with a guy inside of it, so it's totally different. But anyway, Rock Cola put the cabinet together, came up with the artwork, and basically sold it in the US. And I, I don't think it was very successful. And, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there's less than, I don't know, 20 of these games in the world. I mean, this was not a very successful game. And, and I, I know of exactly three of them, actually four maybe. So I have one, Fetish Boy has one, Fun Spot has one, and I know that John Exidy had one. Those are the only four I know of, and, and I, I bet you that there's maybe 50, 100 of these left in the world. And honestly, I think that mine and Fett's are probably in the best shape because ours are actually restored in mint. And uh, I know, I don't know, I, I'm very proud to own this game though. I think it's just neat. It's a neat, neat game and a super cool cab. And I just, it's very generic, but there's something charming about it because it is so generic. Anyway, okay, enough of that. Let's play the game, okay? Now this game, it's my understanding that the hardware is based on Galaxian, okay? And you'll see some similarities, like the Starfield. It's very similar to Galaxian. And I know they used the Galaxian hardware a lot back in the day. I think companies actually copied that architecture and then built a game on top of it. And I think Frogger is the same exact way. I think that's based on Galaxian hardware too. But this is, from my understanding, this is one of those games that, that, that is based on Galaxian. Anyway, let's go ahead and coin it up. There's a little credit board in here. There's no free play. So I'll just throw a bunch of credits in here. And we're gonna play as some Jump Bug. And it is a super cool game. It's, it's super weird, it's super deep. Um, I will tell you this though, I have the game on, on hard now. When it was in the garage and when I got really good at it, I had it on easy. And then I looked at the Twin Galaxy settings because I always set my games to the Twin Galaxy settings. And I'm like, oh, I had mine on easy. So I changed it to hard. And ever since, I can't get as far as I used to. So the game's gotten a lot harder for me. But anyway, we'll do our best to show as much as we can. And if we're super lucky, we'll get to the end of the game and because and, and, it loops around. And all the levels are very different. So anyway, let's shut up. Okay. All right, so we are this little jump bug here. We have an eight-way joystick and one single fire button because my jump bug can fire. Oh my God. 
<laughs> All right, <laughs> we're not starting out well here. Let's kill ourselves. So, so the game has has a, an eight-way joystick and a single fire button. And, and when you jump, though, you actually press up, okay? And it is kind of like a rhythm game. And, and you'll see what I mean when we start. Let's, let's try that again. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this monitor looks pretty great, I have to say. Okay, so we're going to get all the money bags. And you can see on the bottom here, there's a little money bag meter. And for every money bag we get, we kind of fill up one, half of one of the dots. And we want to shoot all the stuff that's flying, because you get really nice points for that. And we kind of can go up there. And, and we can't jump really high all the time. You kind of have this momentum that you need to build by going down and then up. And it's kind of neat. And I, I definitely encourage you guys to try this game in Maine. So this is the first level. I don't really understand what's going on with this Joker stuff and the little court gesture guys. I, I don't know what they're trying to do here with this world, but... Uh, and you have to be careful because the bad guys kind of look like the money bags. And if you're not paying attention, you'll actually land on a bad guy thinking you're grabbing a money bag. Like, okay, I just did it. I, I thought that was a money bag. So you, you, just, you really have to pay attention. Okay, so now is where the game gets kind of cool. So all these clouds have point values on them, okay? And if you bounce on the clouds, you get the point value shown for every bounce. Now the question mark gives you like 400 points. So you want to try to point press as much as possible on the question on the question mark cloud. I'm trying not to die here. So right there I'm getting 400 every time I bounce on it. And when I discovered that that's how that worked, I was like, oh my god, this game's so cool. Alright, so I gotta be careful here. I think on the harder setting you get more of those gesture dudes. And they seem to loop around until you get rid of them. Okay, so we've, we're have we now exiting the first area, I believe. There's my last cloud. Let's get the diamond. But this game's neat. And you know what? I, I got rid of the gyrus to put this down here, and this game's so much deeper. Okay, so now I gotta really pay attention here, okay? So when you get the money bags, they turn into skulls, and you cannot touch them again. So you gotta get the money bag and move forward. And that little fountain thing will actually propel you to the top, and you can quickly exit the game. Now, I'm not gonna point press too much here, but you can actually linger on this level and get a lot of points. <laughs> but I wanna get out of here. Oh, come on. So that, those little houses have those little phoenix guys coming out of them. And I definitely want to stay away. Okay, so we just cleared the level. Now, I did that really fast. If you linger on this level, you can really point press. And actually, the Twin Galaxy setting, uh, the Twin Galaxy rule is that you can't linger in there too much because it's actually cheating. Because those money bags keep coming back. Okay, so now... We're in the next area. It looks like the first level a little bit, but it'll change quickly here. Don't hit the gesture. And I want to get a free life. I need to get some money bags here. i am almost got a free life. Okay, I just got a free life. That's good. We've got one life left. So hopefully we can kind of get kind of far through this next area. And here it is. So we're going underwater. This level's super tough. Ah. Oh, man. That level is so hard. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I don't know what my high score is, but that's not it, I don't think. So, all right, that's the first three. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do. I, I wanna try to show you guys more. I'm gonna start another game, and then I'm gonna come back when I get to the water level, and we'll see if I can show you guys some more. Yes, I know, I stink at these games, I get it. <laughs> All right, I just passed that uh, that kind of uh, cavern level, or whatever you want to call it. So I actually had a pretty good first half of the game. It's definitely easier to play this game without a ca without a camera in front of your face, but whatever. So we only have one life here, so I cannot die. All right, so we're about to go underwater. Jesus! 
I'm so bad at these games. We have to pass this. I mean, we're underwater, and we're going kind of slow, and there's just stuff everywhere. No, 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 no! Let's see if we can get out of the water and get that bird. There we go. Jesus. And the thing about this level here, it just, it won't end. This thing, this level goes on forever, and it's so annoying and hard. Let me make it try to stay up here. No, no, no! There we go. Alright, let's try to stay up here as long as we can. And there's kind of like some slowdown here, you can detect it. I mean, this hardware is probably in overdrive right now. Alright, this is hard. We've got these, these submarine things that are launching torpedoes at us. Ah! Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Do you guys want to try that again? This game is so hard. That was... That... that Alright, we're going to stop here. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm so bad at these games, but... <laughs> so that was 41,360. And uh, the game is just incredibly hard. It, it, it's very challenging, though. I, I think it's hard in a good way, personally. Um... But, you know, I encourage you guys to try that out in MAME. It's a lot of fun, okay? It really is. And, and maybe start out on the easy level, because that's how I was playing in the garage, and I was really enjoying myself. And now it's like, oh, my God, this is hard. So, so. <laughs> all right, so what do you want to do? I, I want to do some quick viewer mail, and we'll get out of here. Uh, this, I guess this is my midweek video. I don't know. You know, the last video, which was the uh, iRobot speaker grill video, I guess that was my Sunday video. It, I, I kind of intend that to be a bonus one, but it, it ended up being my Sunday video. And then, and here we are on Monday, and, and I wanted to do this gameplay video. I just, I was in the mood to do this video. So, uh, but we're gonna get back in the garage. I want to work on the iRobot control panel with that Bondo and that fiberglass stuff. And, uh, but it, it was funny the last video with the speaker grill. The, uh, I got a lot of comments about uh, how I cut the steel, and honestly, uh, I think it turned out great. And you guys haven't seen it yet since I painted it. It looks exactly like the original. If I, when I take the the the, uh, the 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 glass off and the shrouds on the side, and I look at my reproduction and then the original on the left, it's very hard. If you, I, I'd have to tell you that that's a reproduction that I, that I made uh, to really to see that it's not right. Um, but I, I think I did a pretty good job on it. And, and you guys were, you guys had a lot of comments. All good, though. <laughs> so, all right, I want to do just a couple of these, and we'll get out of here. Um, uh, okay, so uh, this one here is from Arcade Enthusiast. And by the way, if you want to participate in the viewer mail, blkdog7 at gmail.com. That's blkdog7 at gmail.com. In the subject line, please put viewer mail. That's blackdog7 at gmail.com. All right, first one from Arcade Enthusiast. Hello, John. I have been designing games for quite a while now and have been wanting to take on the task of making a game look and feel as retro as an arcade game can get. That's super cool, by the way, and there's a lot of guys doing that. When we, go, when we do the Atlanta video, there was a few of those home-brewed arcade games, and I think it's really neat, and I, I want to see one of those take off. I want to see a, a modern retro game at Dave & Buster's or at, you know, whatever the equivalent is today uh, of a public arcade. I, I want to go on location, and I want to see Redemption games, and then a brand new arcade game in a box like this that is not a Pac-Man or Galaga reunion cabinet. So hats off to you for doing that. Anyway, he says, while designing the game schematics is no task, I've already done the game, finding parts for the cabinet will be a doozy, he says. I want to know if you might help me find a couple of leaf switch, bu leaf switch buttons, okay? If it's not too much trouble, or maybe you can help me find a place where leaf switch, leaf switch push buttons aren't too much money. Thanks, Arcade Enthusiast. Well, Arcade Enthusiast, I have good news for you. You can get them pretty easily. You're gonna go to a website called Twisted Quarter, okay? And this right here 
is the leaf switch itself, okay? And it's $5, okay? And this is very close to the Wicco ones that were they were used in the 80s. And I've used these uh, reproductions quite a bit and they're actually very good quality, okay? Now this is the part that goes underneath the cabinet, okay? On the top, you're gonna need a button, okay? And depending on if you have a short control panel, uh, metal or a, t a, a tall, a, a thick one, wood, that determines what size button you get, okay? So on the metal, thin control panels, you want a short button. On a thick wood control butt panel, you're gonna wanna get a long button. But this is it. That's all it is. And a leaf switch is nothing more than two blades of metal touching. So when you push down on the button, these two pieces of metal make contact and that's it. Now, leaf switches, to me, are, are the arcade, I mean, that's, that's the right button for this 80s stuff, you know. When we started getting into the 90s, they started going, going for the micro switch buttons. But everything in the 80s for the most part, except for Nintendo, Nintendo used micro switches, but in a different way. But really, for the most part, all these games have leaf switch buttons. And I like them because there's no resistance. And so I, I encourage you to go to twistedquarter.com and you can buy some leaf switch buttons and you can buy them for your main cabinet, you know, whatever. If you want that true arcade feel from the 80s, that's what you need. Um, anyway, arcade enthusiasts, I hope that helps. Twistedquarter.com. All right, so the next one here uh, is from William and we'll try to help him with his Mario Brothers. It says, John, been watching your show for a couple years now as I've, as I've slowly began to d dive into the hobby. Currently, I am restoring a Mario Brothers Donkey Kong Jr. conversion and I have a couple of questions. I'm getting, getting ready to cap the monitor and I've watched your video on the Sanyo a couple of times. There are a couple of things it didn't cover that I'm wondering about though. My volume pot seems really touchy. Either it's too loud or too lo low, okay? Can I use contact cleaner uh, to fix this or do you think I need a new pot? Uh, the picture on the, on the monitor is a tiny bit crooked, okay? How would I adjust that on the Sanyo? And also the, the front rounded corners are banged up and may need some Bondo. Is the orange a laminate on this plywood? Can I just sand it and prime it and paint it? I have some color match paint. Uh, and would, be, would you suggest painting the whole side since the artwork is still nearly perfect or can get away with only touching up the corner thanks and keep up the good work okay so the first question is about his volume pot okay so on the nintendo games on the sanyu 20 ezs the volume pot is on the monitor okay because the monitor has a, a an audio uh uh, uh my god <laughs> it has an audio uh, amplifier on the monitor okay and when you rebuild the monitor, you want to replace all the caps on that. And that's usually part of the deluxe cap kit, okay? And then also on the audio amplifier board is a volume knob, okay? And that is a potentiometer, and yes, it can get dirty, okay? And that can cause what you're talking about. I would try to clean it up first with some electrical contact cleaner. I would spray that pot and, and just kind of go like this to, you know, kind of clean up the the rheostat, whatever is in there, there's like something like that that's sliding and making contact with something else. So spray that with like some deoxit or some electrical uh, contact cleaner, let it dry off really good, and then turn it on and see if it fixes the issue. Now you could have a bad pot. Um, I don't know the value of that pot. If you look in the manual, it'll say something like 100K ohm pot or 50K or 50 ohm pot or something like that. And that basically means that potentiometer can go from zero to 50 ohms. And so you need to basically figure out which pot you need and go online and try to find a replacement. I'm sure Bob Roberts has a potentiometer that would work, but I suspect that you could clean it. I would also just cap the audio amp too, just so you can cross that off the list and know it's not an issue. But yeah, I would try cleaning that with some contact cleaner first. I I've done that before with the potentiometers. Now you said the picture on the monitor is crooked, okay? Now are you saying that the picture on the monitor is kind of crooked like this? Like that way, like left, right? And if that's the case, that's a yoke issue, okay? Because you could rotate the yoke, and when you rotate it, the picture will also rotate like that, left and right. Now the monitor controls, doesn't have angle controls like this, okay? The controls on the monitor are, will adjust the height and the width, okay? But it will not adjust tilt. So if you have an issue where the picture is tilted like this, that means the yoke on the back of the tube has moved sideways, okay? And you need to move it back. And uh, be careful when you do that. You might want to do it with the monitor off. Just rotate that yoke a little bit and see if you can figure out where it was originally. There might be some clues, maybe some dust or something that shows where it once was. 
But that's the issue, I think, if it's tilted, is that you need to rotate the yoke. Now, uh, now you said that your, um, your cabinet is banged up. Now, I'll tell you this. My Donkey Kong Jr., when I got it, had some issues, and I touched it up with orange paint. I did not redo the laminate, okay, because there were some lock uh, bar holes down here, and I, I patched them up, if you guys can see. Now, I did this a long time ago. My Bondo skills are a lot better, but... Uh, down here, okay, there were some holes here and here and here, and I patched them with Bondo. Now, I didn't use dowels when I did that. I just tried using the Bondo, and of course, later I learned that was not very good. But you can see I patched this up, and it looks pretty good. I, I, it's a very good color match, actually. Now, the original finish on here is just kind of like baked on like, like, a glaze or like a like a marine grade paint like something you'd find on a boat it's not laminate at least most of them aren't i think some of them had laminate but all the ones that i've seen that aren't the particle board it is a very uh hard hard baked on paint service it's not laminate so to redo this uh you could re-laminate you could put laminate on it or, or try to paint it i think most people paint it but if you just have a couple problem areas, I would probably try to bondo and, and color match. Because um, as you can see, I did that here, and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, aside from my bad bondo job, um, I think I did a pretty good job. I'm way better at bondo. I did that like seven or eight years ago. John was a, a bit of a noob then. <laughs> I'm way better now. <laughs> I, I, you know, it had holes, and, and today, if I would encounter those holes, I'd use dowel rods. Back then, I was always trying to fill the holes with Bondo, and that just doesn't cut it. You gotta really fill a majority of the space with something else. So, anyway, William, I hope that, that answers uh, your questions. Um, uh, let me know how it turns out, and, and send me some photos of your cabinet. I'd like to see it all patched up. Um, all right, let's do one more and get out of here. Uh, the next one here is from Charles. Uh, hey, John, Charlie Brown again. Glad the jump bug is finally done. Well, except for the monitor issue, which we fixed in this video. Uh, anyways, my collection is slowly but surely growing. I recently picked up a Hydro Thunder, pretty cheap. The game worked, but that K75 monitor was really dark. I pulled it out. And I saw, I saw a crack on the flyback. I ordered a new one along with a cap kit. Because of your videos, um, uh, because of your videos, I worked up enough balls to fix it, and she is working perfect now. Just like you, I have several projects to work on now. I have a dig dug that needs cabinet repair, which ain't no big deal, but I'm really considering turning it into a centipede. Well, would really appreciate your thoughts on this matter, and congrats on the iRobot. I included a picture of the Hydro Thunder. Hydro Thunder is a cool game. It's a it's like a boat racing game. But little tiny foes. Here's his arcade here. Looks like he's got uh, maybe a Taito cabinet over here, and I don't know, maybe a Mortal Kombat or something. What's this cabinet? I'm not sure. Pac-Man. So anyway, he wants to know if he should convert his Dig Dug into a centipede. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do that. No, all right, if, if your dig dug is in pretty good shape, I, I would I would keep it a dig dug, okay? And honestly, I think that there are far more centipedes in this world than dig dugs. I see centipedes for sale all the time. I mean, centipede is one of the most produced games of all time. It is very, very easy to get a centipede. So I would suggest not ruining the dig dug. And if you really want centipede instead, maybe sell the dig dug to somebody that wants a dig dug and go out and find yourself a centipede. I know the cabinet profiles are very, very similar, but they're not identical. They're not the same. Dig dug is unique to itself and so is centipede. So I suggest that you go and find yourself a centipede and maybe leave Dig Dug, Dig Dug. Um, I mean, one, yeah, I, you know what? I, I mean, I was going to suggest that you could, I don't know if there's a Dig Dug to 60 in one adapter, but then you got to put a new control panel on it. I, I don't know. Listen, when you guys ask me these questions, I'm always going to tell you to leave it original because, like I said, there's far less Dig Dugs in this world than centipedes. And if you really want a centipede, it's very easy to find. I mean, that is a super, super common game. Centipede is not a game that is very expensive, too. It's not a game that commands high dollar. It's a very great game. It's a classic game. But you can get a nice centipede for 300 bucks easily. So 
Uh, that's what I, that's my suggestion to you. Leave Dig Dug at Dig Dug because Dig Dug's awesome. Uh, Dig Dug is a classic. That was a game I loved as a kid too, and it's one of those games I, I, I've always been surprised that I haven't picked up a Dig Dug. But as far as Centipede goes, go find one and, and maybe sell the Dig Dug and take that cash and put it towards a Centipede. So anyway, all right, Charles. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching and thanks for the mail. So anyway, guys, that's gonna do it. Um. I do want to tell you guys, if you guys uh, watch Video Game Outsiders, we're doing a Teespring campaign. Uh, if you go to teespring.com slash Video Game Outsiders, you can order our t-shirt. And I'll be doing a John's Arcade one soon, too. But we wanted to celebrate, we are celebrating the 10-year anniversary of Video Game Outsiders next, next week. Yes, can you believe it? I've been doing a podcast for 10 years, okay? And our anniversary is next week. And to celebrate that, we're, we're, we're selling a t-shirt. So... If you guys want to support Video Game Outsiders, go to teespring.com slash Video Game Outsiders. And of course, listen to the podcast. It's every week at VideoGameOutsiders.com. And I also have Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. And of course, if you've never subscribed to my channel here on YouTube, go ahead and click subscribe. I release new videos on Sundays and sometimes in between. I'm trying to do two videos a week, and you know what? They might come out on Saturday and Monday and Tuesday and Thursday or Friday. I don't know. At the end of the day, the goal is one week, one video at least around Sunday, and then another video squeezed in somewhere else. And uh, so if you want to keep up with all the videos, you need to subscribe. So go ahead and press that and tell your friends. Let's grow the channel, guys. And then I have a bunch of fun stuff coming up here planned, uh, including that Atlanta video that I really need to get over with. I need to do that this week. So, uh, And then we, we got to get to the garage. We have so much stuff to do. And it, it's almost September. John is running out of time, so. <laughs> but I'm so relieved that we got the jump bug all figured out because that was just nagging at me. Every time I came down here to do my videos, I'm like, oh my god, all my games are working perfect except for the one I just finished and it, and it was just bad news and I really needed that closure and we got it now on jump bug, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really wish I was better at the game, but I'm not. <laughs> but we needed to do some gameplay vids, and, and I hope you got uh, some gameplay video footage of that. And I hope you enjoyed it. So, all right, guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you very soon. Uh, thanks for watching and all that good stuff. I love you guys. Later and bye. <laughs>